Hey everybody, I'm John Merritt from Born to Produce. You are going to learn all about drum and bass music production by following along and making this track from nothing right through to the final mix down and master. Pure intoxication. You can follow along in any DAW as long as you know your way around it. The first four lessons are completely free and enough to get you started, so let's get into it. Okay, in whichever DAW you're working in, just set up a new project. Now I work at 96 kilohertz, 24 bits, but if you want to work at a lower sample rate like 44.1 and 16 bits, because perhaps your computer isn't so powerful, that is absolutely fine. In the audio folder of the work files, I have included versions of the audio, both 96K and 24-bit, 44.1 and 16-bit. So just use the relevant samples depending on what sample rate you set your project to. Now the way I work most of the time on a new project is I like to get the chorus section of my track built first, as that is like the most energetic part of the track. And if you get that nailed, then making the rest of the track is relatively easy. That's how I start the track sort of 90% of the time. Now, first off, in order to get the chorus section of our track built, we need a beat so we can get the right kind of energy for this track. As you will have heard in the demo, it's a very energetic DMB tune. So we wanna try and get that kind of energy right from the beginning and stay with it all the way through. So let's just get the basic kick snare pattern in. So if you bought the tutorial, the kick will be in the audio folder of the work files. And if you're watching the free lessons on YouTube, there is a link in the description to download the free work files, which is everything you need to complete the first four lessons. So download and uncompress them. So in your DAW, just navigate to wherever you have uncompressed the download. I've just put mine on my desktop because it's easy to get to. Go to the work files audio folder and then just find the kick sample. And I'm just gonna load this as a sampler track and draw in a blank bit of MIDI on there. So one of the first things I'm gonna do though is turn down the kick to like sort of minus seven. Why? Because everything I bring into the track from here on out will be turned down to match the volume of the kick. This is basically the quick way of ensuring that the levels in my track always remain manageable, also known as gain staging. And let's just go into the kick MIDI and I'm just gonna quickly draw in my kick. So one on the downbeat, so at the very start of the bar, and then one on the offbeat of the third beat. Okay, and I'll just loop that. So that's the basic kick pattern. By the way, if you're starting in your track, start from bar five. That way, whenever I do something in the tutorial and yours is lined up, you'll know exactly where we are at all times. All right, so great, let's get the snare in. So in the work files again, let's find the snare, and I'm gonna create a sampler track draw in a blank bit of MIDI. And with the snare, it's always very simple. The notes go on the second and the fourth beat. Okay, and we got that very typical drum and bass beat, but let's just quickly turn down the snare as well. By the way, your tempo wants to be set to 172. That is the tempo of this track. So make sure that you've changed that as well. But we have here the most sort of basic kind of drum and bass beat the simplest sort of pattern that it's used at like 97% of all DMB tunes have the same kick snare pattern. Obviously we're gonna play around with that and do all sorts of fills and fun stuff with it as we progress, but this is the basic foundation of our track. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is sort of funk this up a bit. And to do that, we're gonna use some loops. So loops are possibly the best way to get good drums easily into your projects. However, I tend not to just use full loops taken out of sample packs, even though I actually recommend to beginners that is totally fine to just take a loop out of a sample pack and use it. Basically just get in there and make some music. But when I use loops in my own productions, and I think maybe this is just some weird thing in my head, but I can't quite be comfortable with just taking a whole loop and slapping it into my project. I kind of don't want someone to hear it and think, oh, you got that loop from such and such sample pack. From my own experience, when I recognize a loop in someone else's song, 
I then start to question whether the rest of the track is just made of loops. So it kind of puts me off. Now that might be a bit silly, but I am a bit silly, so I guess it rhymes. Now what I'm guessing at is that we want to put at least a little effort into making the loops sound unique and also customizing them so they work better for our specific track. Now what I do to achieve this is use a combination of loops. So I'll take between two to five loops that I think all sound pretty good with the track as they are, then I'll slice them up and then try different combinations of those slices to make something that sounds a little more unique and customized for a particular track. That's what we're gonna do here. Now to keep things simple, we'll use just two loops. But as I say, you can do this with as many loops as you like. You can also use plugins like Ultrabeat, which is actually a reactor plugin to do this automatically and it's really cool. But as this tutorial is built to be as accessible to everyone as possible, no matter what plugins you have, we're gonna do this manually, all right? And then you can understand the process a bit better as well. So if you go to the work files and find drum loop 01, gonna drag that in and drum loop 02. That being turned down, so that's fine. Let's just have a listen to those separately. So I'm just muting drum loop 02. Let's just turn that down a bit. Okay, so not a bad loop, but not amazing either. Let's listen to the next one. That sounds better, but let's just chop these up a bit and make something that's a bit more customized. So when it comes to chopping up, I generally speaking, uh, let's just select both of those. And then you can do it in like sort of half beat increments if you want to, or do whole beat increments. Just make sure that I'm not going to chop it at a point where we've got a drum sound. Let's do a whole beat there. And then just snip that last one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is basically mute one of them. And then we'll go through and try different sounds. So I like the start of that, it's got a bit more energy, that's fine. And I like that bit as well, so let's try that. And that's pretty much. Of course, with the mute tool like this, you can actually try the inverse of that by muting the whole lot. And I could work in some particular tracks, but when I switch it over, that's got a bit more energy. So I actually quite like that, and we're gonna use that particular pattern. Let's just make this a little neater. I'm just gonna delete the muted parts and drag this all onto one track. Delete that other track. And then I'm just gonna go in and very closely add a fade to the beginning. Very slight one, and to the end as well of all of these events. So they've all got that fade on now. Just to make sure there's no sort of nasty clicks or pops. And that's it, we've got our drum beat. Now I personally think that sounds better than either of those beats did on their own. So it's not just a vanity thing. Using this method, we can actually customize the beat, like I've said, and make it the best for the particular track that we're working on. And this really is where having drum and bass sample packs are gonna be worth their weight in gold. All right, one last addition to make, and that is going to be a little flick to the end of the drum loop, but I don't want this to be every single bar. So we're going to copy this over. So it's covering four bars. And then we're just gonna add this drum loop 03 fill to the very end there. So from bar eight, turn it down a bit. And it just creates a nice continuous loop that sort of flows okay. Now, just so you're aware, we will be adding more drums later in the tutorial that we're gonna make out of one-shot drums, or ride cymbals, basically. So it's not just about using loops, we will make our own sort of custom loops, if you like. But what we have here now acts as the foundation for our track, and it gives it the initial energy that we want. And getting the energy right as you're building your tracks is important, as we're gonna feed off that energy, and it will help guide us in our decisions as to what elements will work in our tracks. 
All right, that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll work on the first part of the baseline of our track. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.